let's get it, let's get it. What's good, world? It's your boy, Mastermind Mind, and this is another weekday drop. October 2021, folks. Listen, something to talk about because we got some games dropping this month. I'm um, be going over a little bit of stuff. I'm not going to be here too long, but I'm just kind of going over little headlines and whatnot, what's been happening from uh, October up until now, the beginning of October up until now. And a couple of stuff I kind of want to speak on and definitely got to touch on this new Call of Duty Season 6, especially Zombies and Vanguard. Let's jump right into it. But before we jump right into it, y'all be sure to follow me everywhere. Twitter, Master23Mind, TikTok, Master23Mind, IG, Master23Mind, Twitch, Master23Mind, YouTube, Mastermind RGTV, and also follow the gaming page on IG, Mastermind RGTV on IG. Listen, man, we lit everywhere. Everywhere. Real gamer on all uh, podcast platforms. We out. We everywhere. So listen. All right. First thing I want to jump right into before I jump into uh, the new zombie game that's out, but I want to touch on Call of Duty Zombies Season 6. We just got Season 6 uh, drop of the zombies, and it's looking really good. And the cool thing about it is... Um, it's going to pick back up where Vanguard, when Vanguard is released, that's on the way. That's next month. So what we see at the end of season six of Call of Duty, the new zombies, we're going to see uh, the new whatever happens after this on Vanguard zombies. So the Vanguard, a lot of people don't really like the new Call of Duty that's coming out. But for the mere fact that they're linking the zombies to this one, this is going to probably make people go out and buy it because they're linking a zombie story mode that we all enjoy a lot of us a lot of the cod community joy enjoy the zombie games and the zombies mode so by them linking this one to season six to a whole new game that's like yo i might as well go ahead and buy this game because all we do is play zombies anyway even if you don't like the multiplayer mode or any other modes that they have on call of duty you're going to probably respectfully still buy it because of zombies. Moving on, because that makes up a good point. Listen, man, back for blood. What is that going to do for, you know what I'm saying? Is that going to take some of the crowd away from us? It's going to, is it going to take the COD crowd away and move them on over to back for blood? Because I'm looking at back for blood now, man, and it's looking real good, man. And we've seen the beta, the alphas and everything, demos and all this stuff is out. It is here, folks. Looks really good. Uh, I'm always down for a zombie, a zombie shoot 'em out, bang bang. You know, I love zombie games. So this is one of the zombie games that I don't think there's not too much of a story to it. But for the mere fact, if you're looking for the next like survival, just kick it with some buddies, co-op like type game, shoot 'em some zombies. This is this is definitely the game for it. Now I haven't personally had my hands on the game just yet. But from everything I've seen so far, the game's looking great. Uh, I like I like the weapons so far. I like what I see so far. For it's like um, now I'm not really sure on about you know how quick people go down, how you revive people. Apparently they got like different things with accessories and different cards or whatnot you can add on uh, to like help out your team or uh, additional attachments for your gun, different stuff like that. And the cool thing about it is, one of my favorites is you have to work as a team. And see, it's the thing. I'm a team player in zombie games and any type of shooter game that you put me in. I do really good on objective games on Call of Duty. That's why I like face-off and dominations. So, with uh, four team-based zombie games like Back for Blood, and you kind of have to work as a team because it's like, you're going to need a doctor on your team. You're going to need a shooter on your team. You're going to need a cover fire person you're gonna need a money person you know what i'm saying you're gonna need different stuff and it's up to you four to kind of really figure out the rest and kind of survive this apocalypse that's what i'm talking about we need that same team strategy in season six zombies but the question is will back for blood be so of so much of a dope game do it has the potential to take away call of duty season six fan base because a lot of people is not really feeling this vanguard Back for Blood gonna hold us up for at least November and December. I know that for a fact because the game already looking, it got some exposure and it's looking really good. A lot of people have played the beta and, and alpha, and everybody's like, "Yo, we kind of we feeling this." You know what I'm saying? The review so far, I took a look at um one review, but not IGN review, and they were they reviewed it pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So everything again, so far the game is looking pretty good. I'm just like, "Yo, 
Call of Duty is normally like known for like taking over, having the biggest zombies zombies community. So I'm like, yo, Back for Blood is looking really dope right about now. It may just take that community from Call of Duty because we're not so happy with Vanguard. Maybe. Speaking of community, touching right into the next topic, Grand Theft Auto. We all want GTA 6. But one of the things that got us all curious is the fact that you remember the, the GTA trilogy, the original trilogy, like the one they put packaged all of Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. They packaged it together, put it on the store. We play it, whatever, the old edition. I know because I got it. So the thing is, they're dropping the remastered or the remake trilogy, but removing the old one off the store. Now, see, the thing is, give him, keep my classics, keep my classics, but I can understand why they're doing it, but at the same time, don't take that option away from us gamers. You feel what I'm saying? Some of us like games that don't look so much up to par. Even if they do remaster or remake this game, it's like one of those, okay, if you do make the graphics and everything better, you're still going to have a fan base of people that's going to enjoy the classic ones. So by them taking the option away and removing it off the store, I think is, you know what I'm saying, not necessarily a bad thing on them, but you don't 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 take that option away from the gamers. Give us gamers the same like give us give us all the options that you got. The same option you gave us before you drop this old game. Technically these are really, really old games and y'all polishing them up. Nah, man, give us the polished version for a cheaper price because they're talking about rumors that the game may be 70 bucks. Now, wait a minute now. I don't really know about that one. I, I, I don't know about that one. I don't know, man, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I got to get my head right for this one. Here's the thing. 70 bucks for we're talking about a game. We're talking about a game that has been out for years, yo. We're talking about Grand Theft Auto 3, San Andreas, Vice City. But even if you tune up the graphics, keep the missions and all that the same, you're not really, they're not really going to be adding new things to it. They may, I'll be surprised if they add something onto these trilogy games. I'm not going to even front. I'll be surprised if they do. But I doubt if they do. They'll probably just touch up the graphics or whatnot. But, at the end of the day, the community want GTA 6. And by them removing this old trilogy off the store, it's like, eh, why? We want our option. You know what I'm saying? I'm okay with it because I already got the game. You know what I'm saying? I, I, got, I got the joke on PS2. I got the trilogy on the 4. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to bottle win, but, you know. It feel good to have that classic because that was one of my favorite games back in the day. But, yo, like, yo, like, 70 bucks? Whoa. Y'all a little steep with that, man. Chill out, man. 70. The cool thing I can say is the mere fact that we're getting this trilogy on all platforms. I'm talking about Xbox, PlayStation, PC, mobile, Switch. It's going to be epic, folks. And remember the Switch Killer? We call it the Switch Killer. The Switch Killer is... You remember that old PC handheld device that looks really like the Switch? I covered it on a couple podcasts, previous previous episodes before. Be sure to check out the previous episodes of the podcast on all platforms. Real gamer, baby. Listen, man. It's going to be able to play on that. And that thing looks good. And it is the Switch Killer. But 70 bucks. Oh, man, y'all killing me. Moving on, man. Speaking of a Switch killer and handheld and just, like, whoa, unbelievable moments, Cyberpunk 2077 is at nine bucks at Target. Now, I seen it on the web. I didn't actually see Target website or anything. And I was seeing it on Twitter. Like, IG, I was like, IG Aaron tweeting. I was like, yo. But this is for old gen PS4. Whoa, nine bucks? Even if the game is buggy, I may have to pick that one up. <laughs> but I personally wait for next gen, you know what I'm saying, or current gen, I say, 
to really get that game, but I was a little shocked to see that. Like, nine bucks? Yeah, I'll get that. Buggy or not, that's still a deal. Moving on, man. I'm so tired of seeing all of these games talking about making movies and TV shows. Cool, but some games don't deserve it. There is rumors around the net that we may be getting a Fortnite movie, folks. Fortnite? Fortnite may be making a movie. There's rumors all over the net that the Epic Games is talking about, yo, let's go and make this Fortnite movie. I don't really see how they're gonna make this. I, I don't I don't I don't really see that going so well. Um, they can possibly do it like an anime to where you're like playing in the game and you get stuck in the world. I don't know. But for those that play Fortnite and know a little backstory of Fortnite or know how the story mode or whatever goes on Fortnite, feel free to come on the show. Let's talk about it. Let me know. Holla at your boy. I got questions. You got answers. Let's talk about it. Moving on. Um, we may get a Metal Gear Solid 3. I spoke about this on the last episode. We may get a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. That's what we need. That's what we need. If I was doing a versus of remastered or remake games a good versus battle would be between Metal Gear Solid 3 remake and this whole Grand Theft Auto trilogy if they do the if they redo the graphics I'm pretty sure they're going to redo the the graphics because this little intro preview scene of the opening that we got that opening was repolished now, with that being said, the graphics should be repolished as well. So, would a, a big game like that versus a game like Metal Gear Solid 3 remake, yo, I'm all for it. I think we should uh, start doing game versus. And another dope game remake that'd be really dope is Resident Evil 4 remake. Y'all know I'm a personally big, big fan of Resident Evil 4. Now, don't forget... We got Resident Evil 4 VR coming out. Listen, that's a whole nother ball game. If they get it right. Now, the last VR game I was kind of really pumped for, but they didn't really get it right, was Hitman 3. Speaking of Hitman 3, Hitman 3 is doing really good numbers. And these guys is like, yo, we're seeing a really big return from the game Hitman 3. Remember, these are the same guys... That's going. Uh, that's also working on the GoldenEye remake. Remember GoldenEye on Nintendo 64? We're getting a remake of GoldenEye. Apparently, everything's supposed to be the same. Um, you know, probably they may add some new stuff to it, but the storyline and everything's supposed to be the same. Hopefully so. I really hope they don't drop the ball on that. And, you know, we also got a Perfect Dark uh, remake coming out. That's going to probably be an Xbox exclusive. Probably so. Um, but this GoldenEye, I mean, if we was doing remake versus, we would have to do a GoldenEye remake and a Perfect Dark gold, uh, and a perfect dark remake. Let's put those two in the versus battle, baby. Let's make it happen. We got rap, we got rap battles or rap versus battles and everything happening. Uh, we talk, they're talking about doing comedy uh, versus battles. Let's do a gaming versus battle. Pick your favorite remake, two of your favorite remakes, and what would you put your two favorite remakes up against? My two favorite remakes I just told you, Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake and Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Remake. And the next the next two to go up to battle, I would say Resident Evil 4 Remake. And it's a tough one. It's a tough one going with Resident Evil 4 Remake versus... I'm going to come back to that one. But definitely a Perfect Dark and a GoldenEye remake. That would be a great versus. But something with Resident Evil, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to come back to that one. That's my third pick. I'm going to come back to that one. I just want to speak about some of these games that's coming out in October real fast. Um, we got FIFA that's already here, the new soccer game. Of course, the graphics look amazing on it. Um, some of these games is actually already out. Oh, oh, Far Cry 6 is actually out. I've been seeing some good gameplay footage of Far Cry 6. 
Um, definitely. I know when I, yeah, I know when I first seen it, I was like, yo, that grass look boo boo, yo. But the graphics, I mean, is they're 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 perfectly fine. Don't freak out. The graphics is not that bad. Um, Metroid Dead. Now, over the week, I was reading a bunch of stuff about this. Apparently, they got a modded version of Metroid Dead, and it's running incredibly. The modded version is running very, very well. And it was an argument all over. It was booming on online. It was like, well, in like modded games and pirated games, all this stuff is still illegal, right? You can't necessarily, you don't necessarily supposed to tamper with your console or whatever, you know, with the homebrew and all this stuff to play these modded games or to play these emulator games. I say I want to say modded games. I, I changed the vocabulary to to, uh, to to emulators. Basically, this Metro did is a new game, but they've already been able to put it into some type of emulator and illegally play it and running at better quality. Now, the thing is. I'm kind of in the middle of that because I do feel that it, once we buy the console or once we buy the product, it's all ours and you shouldn't really give a damn what we do with it. But I do look at the fact that, wait a minute, this is a new game and it's a big game. This is not just some off the wall, made overnight type game. This is Metroid, a very, very like respectable game. Now, with that being said, I don't think we should mod or, you know, emulate new games that's coming out, especially like a big game like that. But then again, in the day of ages that we're living in, digital world and technology, all this stuff is cool. So you got to kind of ask yourself, like, you know, um, that you can't really kind of avoid. It's going to happen. If, even if we don't hear about it, it's going to happen. But I do say that games like don't do that with games like Metroid because you mess up the support for, first of all, we we, we actually waiting on the other Metroid game that's supposed to be dropping on Switch. But if people are out modding the this whole pre-sequel one, I'm going to call it a pre-sequel, the Metroid Dead or Dread, um, if people is out, you know, modding this one and doing all types of things to this one, the develop team and, and the guys over here is going to be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Deep down, personally, if I was on a dev team, I'd be like, man, you know what? People's doing that with the game, so, you know, screw the next game. You know, this whole Metroid uh, 4. We, we're in on Metroid Prime 4. You know what I'm saying? We're pretty hyped about that one. Don't do that with newer games that they are already working on because it took them hard work and hard time to, you know what I'm saying, make this game. If you're going to do that, go ahead and go out and pay for that game. You feel what I'm saying? But if you don't have it, you know, like I said, digital world, things like that is going to happen. But me personally, I would probably go out and buy Metro. I'm a big Metro fan and I'm a game supporter anyway. So I probably would have went out and bought the game and then... Did what I wanted to do or whatever. Perfect example. I did the same thing with Legend of Zelda. Uh, I had a mod version of Legend of Zelda. But I actually owned Legend of Zelda. Before I, you know, tampered with it or did the modded and all that. Didn't really get into the modded version. And continued to play the, the paid for version. So, you know what I'm saying? Because I understand and I respect the developers. And I understand that a game like Legend of Zelda or Metroid is really big games. And we don't want to screw it up. For other gamers or ourselves in the future for them making a very good quality, um, um, quality game, you know? People going to be mad at me about that. My microphone is going to be mad at me about that. But, you know, hey. Uh, moving on, man. Uh, let's see. We got Battlefield actually got pushed back. I think it was supposed to be on October the 22nd. That may actually be pushed back to October. I mean, to November. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, October 26th. I'm interested to see how that's going to do. I don't necessarily want the game, but I'm interested to see where it's going to go and what's going to happen with it. Um, let's see. It was another. Riders Republic. Pretty dope. Uh, October the 28th. That's going to be pretty a pretty dope launch. Age of the Empires. Uh, it looked pretty cool when I seen it. I was like, okay, you know, it's not necessarily something I would probably go out and get, but look looked like a pretty cool game. Um... Oh, the Mario Party Superstars. 
Now, it's going to be pretty fun. October 29th is going to be pretty fun. But at the same, oh, excuse me, but at the same time, I'm like, yo, these are basically just old Mario Party uh, matches or old Mario. It's like a remix of a bunch of old Mario Party stuff. I think they're adding some new stuff to it. So, I mean, I wouldn't just say it's all just reconjured up. But it's definitely some stuff that, you know what I'm saying, uh, I'll definitely enjoy playing. And um, it's a couple other stuff, but I don't really, I don't know too much about the other games that's here on the list. I'm looking at looking at a random list. Just a couple October games. Um, but, yeah, man, Far Cry 6, I think, out of this whole month, I would have to say Far Cry 6 is probably the biggest. Far Cry 6 and Back for Dead, I mean, Back for Blood and Metro Dread are the three, the top three October games. Um, I would have threw Mario Party in that mix, but those three games definitely top it. You know what I'm saying? So they got my pick for that one. Um, I, I don't think it's too much else I really wanted to come in here and speak about. Um, it would definitely be some more stuff throughout the week and uh, throughout the month of October. You know what I'm saying? But I'm actually finna go in here and play some Call of Duty, Cold War, uh, Season 6 Zombies with the homie Q. So that's going to be exciting. Be sure to check me out on Twitch. That's 23 Mine. And um, yeah, I've been actually playing, uh, speak about Cold War real fast before I get out of here. i actually been playing a lot of league play. I've been playing a lot of league play. been playing with a couple of pros. And we've been having some good games, man. Really good games. Uh, I should have been I should have been playing league, you know. Um, but face off is is my love, and uh, y'all be sure to check out the twenty minute Call of Duty show Monday through Saturday. Uh, actually, Monday through Sunday, I do a, tw- a quick twenty minute uh, play of Call of Duty face off, and sometimes league play twenty to thirty minutes almost every day on Twitch. Um, and later on on YouTube. So uh, y'all be sure to follow me at YouTube, Mastermind RGTV, and at Twitch, Mastermind. And shout out to all the new followers and the new subscribers at YouTube and the new listeners. And uh, we're growing every day and hopefully to grow even bigger and more and more support me. And I appreciate y'all. And uh, stop by and drop some comments. And just remember, look, the game show, the game doors is open. You got back for blood. Come in the show. Come on in here. Let's talk about it. We can we can chop it up on the phone. We can not do video. We, we can do video however you want to do it. This is basically just, y'all see how passionate I am about games. I want to hear your passion about games. You got Back for Blood? Let me know how it is. You got Far Cry 6? Let me know how it is. Well, how you feel about this Cyberpunk 27.7? It's going down to nine bucks. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> you know? Hey, what's your game of the year? Because remember, the Game Awards is coming. December the 9th. What do you think is going to be game of the year? Let's talk about it. Be sure to follow me everywhere. Mess to through mine and stay tuned for more. That's all I got for y'all right now. I will be back with more podcast episodes throughout the month of October and November. Just know we're here gaming on, man, and always rotating the mind of gaming. I appreciate y'all. Y'all stay blessed and love. And uh, peace. We out. YouTube world. Be sure to check out the podcast. Real Gamer on all platforms. We out. Tune in now to me at Twitch, Master Twin 3 Mind. We're finna get ready to go live right now. Peace, one love.